Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we're going to be doing some upgrades for a commercial wine cooler. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we are working on these wine coolers back here. These are two boxes. We're going to be doing some upgrades with a nice LED light bar specifically made for refrigeration equipment and we're going to be upgrading their thermostat from mechanical to digital. We're going to be working on this left wine cooler. We have our air-cooled condensing unit located behind there and we have three doors. As you can see when you open up, turn off my light. We can't even see what's going on when you're having a party here. This is an event space. You can't see what you're working with. The unit next door to it. Look at that. That's the light that I installed here. You have an incredible amount of light. It really is a great light bar. We're going to be doing the same setup here. It's going to be great. Let's start by turning off the power. We have a breaker panel here and thankfully it is labeled bar number two, left wine cooler, off. We can see that the blowers have turned off. That's a beautiful thing. I also upgraded these covers and replaced the motor here. The old fan motor cages here were rusty and metal. It really was terrible. I did the same for the other huge upgrade. Let's take out these bottles and drop this blower section. To drop this blower section, we're gonna take off the four screws on the edges, one, two, and the same on the other side. Oh man, this screw here is messed up. The back piece is back spinning. We're gonna have to take off what we can. I gotta try to hold back somehow and get rid of that. I'm gonna have to probably, probably better off drilling some new screws in there. Okay, that is coming down. I gotta get to that back piece there. I was able to get that screw off. We have this little holder here, and this piece here is was back spinning, so I have to hold back and then drill off the screw. We got that off. I did clean this unit last time as well. Looks great. We're gonna be running power on this side. We're gonna run the LED light bar across here. We're gonna drill into there. We're gonna steal 120 volts from here and it'll have power all the time. Also, look at this thermostat. That's the, that's the thermostat. Super outdated. Time to get rid of it. I hate thermostats like this where you don't know what temperature you're setting it to. You have one, two, three, four, five, six. This thing is a mess. And look inside there, they destroyed that little piece right there for the flathead to adjust the temperature this light bar goes across the entirety of the box in front let's get that in there okay I'm just gonna set it down it does have a bracket already built into it, it really is a great piece this side here a little quick disconnect which is awesome you would just disconnect that and pull it out we're gonna drill a hole into here and get that light bar in there and we're gonna drill another hole into here for the thermostat and we're gonna take power wires and everything through here about here will be even just gonna mark where I'm gonna make some holes some pilot holes with my drill Going through stainless steel is pretty difficult. You really need the right bits and the right drill. One there. And one there. I tried using my impact drill. This guy. 
and it's like impossible to drill <laughs> with it so having the right drill really helps i learned that the hard way i was losing bits that these things were like just melting off and breaking it was just incredible but anyways let's mount this thing just gonna lift that up and get started Space. Let's get that in. Beautiful. And let's get the next one in. Do the same for the other side. Get those in place. Get this drill straight. Let's do it from here you can't see it and I'm on my knees also using this foam pad man this thing is great if you're doing anything where you have to be on your knees definitely recommend this and not knee pads knee pads are extremely uncomfortable they really irritate the back of my knees and it's just it's not comfortable but here's the LED bar goes across pretty much the entire length of this refrigerator and they're super bright i love how these lights are encased in plastic so they're waterproof and it's actually two strips of lights which make it super bright i also love how it comes with this waterproof cord and a little quick disconnect here very very simple setup 120 volts black is your hot wire white is your neutral green is your ground and I went out to tap in here and figure out who's who. To run this through, I have this step drill bit, which is gonna drill into there. It's really a great bit. Also, I'm gonna use one of these connectors. These lights, it's like a Romex connector, where it's adjustable, and we're gonna mount it on there and tighten down on this plug, so you guys will see how easy it will be to replace this also in the future. Also, it gives it a nice support. Looks like there's already a hole here. I should be able to just reuse that, make make use out of it. Well, oh, there's water coming out of there. That's the drain pan. <laughs> Got a really smooth and nice hole. Take off this locking ring. I'm gonna push that through. You know, let's see, let's see if I can I'm kind of do in this blinded. But let's get that in there. I'm gonna have a little something like that. Alright, I am going to push this through. All right, I'm just gonna strip some of this insulation back. And the wires. Yeah. Let's cut some of that out. Figure out where our 120 is. Well, I'll know which ones are feeding the motors. That's, gonna, that's direct power all the time. So that's gonna be my 120 there. And then these two wires are my thermostat wires, so. We'll reuse that. I also, for this little thermostat, I gotta run a neutral for that wire. Unfortunately, there's no ground here. Okay, so there's black wire coming in. Powers one side of this motor. And then the other side, this blue wire, is the other side of the motor. So these two are my 120 right here. There should also be 120 being tapped off, feeding the thermostat. And then coming out of the thermostat, I know is the red wire going to the condensing unit to start the compressor. Let's turn the power back on. Look at that. That is a beautiful thing. Got a nice light here. So that was right. This was my 
hotline and this was my neutral I knew just from without even testing just because the motors were connected there this is going to be the two wires for our thermostat gotta figure out a placement for it everything's working oh that's nice that is nice here's a control that many people have been recommending the pen a421 I was installing the Rankos previously. This is going to be my first time installing one of these. Let's see how this goes. The sensor for this one is separate. You're going to have to wire that in. So I'm going to have to figure out where to do that. The only thing is, is placement. I'm going to have to run the new cord and through here, the power. You can only go from the bottom on the on this one. So the thing is over here, got a drain line and the power going through the box. But I'm thinking... If I, put it down, if I put it down here, someone's going to hit it with a bottle and also power goes from the bottom. It's going to go look crazy if it's going like this. Maybe if I put it here, it might look, you know, it might look better. And I go from underneath into there. Let me figure out a placement. All right, I took off the two screws on the bottom, pull this open. I see right there it says sensor connection and then back here we have some terminals here all right there ac input left is your l or n right so neutral and 120 in the middle or a line on the left and line on the right for 240 and then we have our contacts here output on the left it says lc okay so common middle is normally open and on the right is normally closed all right i'm thinking a little something to put it here and then we'll put another elbow and just knock it into here i think that'll be the best bet and we'll have space to bring down that condensate pan we don't want to be in the way of that I could possibly put it here and hide the wires going through. But I don't know, I, I don't like the idea of it being sideways. I kind of want to see the temperature when I open the box. I believe I could put the screws in on this one without taking out the board. Let's mark it over there and drill some screws in. Just to be a little safe, I took off the one screw on the bottom left here. And then you can kind of just pull this out and I feel like it will be a lot safer put that on some cardboard and I can mark the holes and everything and just put it together definitely don't want to make any holes in the refrigerant lines or that drain hose so let's mix let's drill some holes here and get this started Beautiful. Gotta charge my battery. Let's put a few screws in here. These so are nice and flat. They go right in. And that's a beautiful thing. Okay, just push the board back in. Falls into some clips. Once again, I gotta charge that battery. Tighten that down. That board is now secured and we're ready to go. You really shouldn't have to take that off. You could take off this pen and you'll be able to get to the drain. Unless there's like a short in the wiring, you should be okay. There's no leaks in the system with the refrigerant piping and worst comes to worst. I mean, you could just take off the panel. This whole thing will kind of drop down. So not bad, not bad. Ain't, ain't, ain't not my preferred, preferred way, but I think that will look the best. All right, that's looking good. Let's drill this next hole. All right, that looks nice and clean. I already wired these two. These two black wires are gonna be my 120, and these two wires are gonna be for my contacts. I did mark the neutral with a white tape, and I did mark one of these red wires with white tape as well so I know who's who. All right, so it's all wired up. 
So if we look here, we got four wires, right? Two black, two red. One black I labeled as white with the white tape right here. And it goes to our neutral. The next black wire goes here. And this is our hotline, always getting power. Next, I had two wires here for the thermostat. One wire going back feeds the compressor. I connected the normally open contact on the thermostat to this one. And then the other wire that was here was some kind of power wire coming in, which was this black wire, and it's then it's feeding here. So the, basically the two wires here go on the two red wires, the contact wires at the thermostat, and then we're just feeding 120 directly to the control all the time. All right, as far as power, everything should be good. Let's connect the sensor to the thermostat. That is gonna be ran behind, I'm gonna mount it behind the evaporator coil for return air for the most accurate reading. Okay, as far as the sensor, I wired it right there, the bottom two terminals, common and sen. I'm gonna show you a picture so you guys can see that a little clearer. I just turned the power back on. That's all back up. That looks beautiful. It's awesome. I don't even need to use my light anymore here. Right there. Let's see. It says 56 degrees. Got to figure out how to set the parameters for this one. Let's see. Menu. On. Off. SFD. <laughs> figure out how to do this so parameter code I want to take a picture so you guys can see what's going on all right we're gonna have to figure this one out together so SF stands for sensor failure if you set it to zero output relay de-energized and if you set it to one output relay energized so if the sensor fails you want the condensing to turn on or off I will leave it de-energized so sensor failure SF I'm gonna set it to zero menu ASD what is ASD anti short cycle delay zero to twelve minutes zero minute delay so off the relay off okay so we're gonna set the temperature for the off let it shut off 37 degrees This was the basic menu, and that should be pretty much what we need. Let's see, this thing just goes back to normal when it's done. Probably if you don't press any keys, it's gonna go back and set everything, and also read the temperature. There we go, it's 50 degrees in this box. If you guys listen, Dancing units operating. That's good. Let's just go through this menu and see if anything was there. So it shows a little cooling symbol and then it's 50 degrees in here. I do need to set this up behind the evaporator. Menu off at 37, on at 40. Sensor failure. It's not gonna work. Then it's probably just gonna keep running. Then it's gonna freeze. ASD, zero at time delay, um, all right, that's it. Don't touch any keys and it's gonna go back to normal. You know what? What I just realized is the air is actually being pushed out through the back of this one, look. So 
air is being pulled into here. It's not being pushed out. So I felt a real rush of air there. So if anything, we want it somewhere closer to here. We've got to figure out where to place this sensor properly. For the sake of being neater and operating better. So it went through here, through there, then it goes around and then inside there. And I mounted the sensor here since this is going to be the return air. Let's close this all up and neaten it up. All right, guys. That's a beautiful thing right there. I think it's much better having it inside there. Awesome. And there we have it. We are all done. Definitely the light bar made a huge difference. Very much needed, especially when they have events here. And the thermostat is doing its thing. What's important is that this is going to be more accurate now, and we actually know what temperature will be in the box, and we have it properly set. We're going to wrap this one up here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as you come out with new videos every week. I'll catch you all next time.